Hey, what's up everyone? Julian here and welcome to episode one of a brand new series called Learning Python. And we're gonna be learning the Python programming language from the ground up. And by the end of it, I hope that you'll have a good base foundation of knowledge and you'll be able to write your own scripts, programs, apps, web applications, tools, utilities, and more. So in this episode, we're going to be grabbing a couple of tools that we're gonna be using throughout this series. We're gonna need an editor where we're gonna write our code and we're gonna need a terminal emulator where we can navigate our file system, run commands, and interact with Python. So these tools aren't essential. The reason I'm making this video is so that everyone can follow along and we can all be using the same tools. However, if you wanna use your own editor or your own terminal, then feel free to do so. And if you don't know what a terminal is, then don't worry because we're gonna cover that throughout this series too. So let's jump straight in. So the tools we're gonna to be using, our editor, we're going to use uh, Visual Studio Code, which is a free editor from Microsoft and you can get it at code.visualstudiocode.com. I'll throw a link in the description. And the great thing about VS Code, as it's known, is that it's cross-platform. So whether you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, it's gonna work and it's gonna feel the same and it's free and it's very popular and it's great for working with Python because it's fast, it's lightweight and it's not gonna bog us down. We can quickly open files and we can quickly get to work. So the first thing you wanna do is come to download. And again, just go ahead and click that button. And like I said, it's cross-platform so it's gonna work on any operating system. And once that's downloaded, go ahead and click on it. We're gonna click next. We're gonna accept the agreement. That's fine. That's fine. Now here you want to click add open with code on both of these options. And I'm also gonna go ahead and register code as an editor. So this is gonna let us right click on files and folders and quickly open them with Visual Studio Code. So go ahead and click next and install and let that do its thing. And thankfully this is a relatively fast installation process. And once that's done, we can go ahead and click on finish and there we go, Visual Studio Code has opened up. So let's make this full screen. And mine is uh, quite zoomed in, but that's fine. I hope you guys can all see what we're doing here. So this is our editor. So let's go for a quick guided tour. So we have our file explorer here, and this is our, our navigation bar on the left. So the first tab is our file explorer. So any open files or directories will be displayed in here. Again, you can open a folder and all of its contents will be displayed here. So we can quickly access and create and delete, rename and work with our files in the Explorer. The search is to search for text in any open files that you've got and we can do some cool things with searching and replacing. We then have a source control tab. Now, if you don't know what source control or version control is, do not worry. Um, but if you do, it's where we can manage our source control for the project right from Visual Studio Code, which is nice. Now, if you know Git, then Git is a type of source control and Git integrates very well with Visual Studio Code. The next tab down is the debugger. And this is a tool that we can use to debug our Python code and step through it and figure out what's going on if we've got some kind of error. We're gonna be covering debugging in this series. And the final tab is the extensions one. So the extensions in Visual Studio Code are like plugins which give additional functionality on top of the editor, which is nice because it means that the editor itself doesn't come pre-installed with a load of extensions which bog it down. So we can choose what extensions we want to use. And the first one we are going to use is the Python extension. So go ahead and search for Python and the first result, you can see here, it's from Microsoft. Now, I've already got this installed on this system from a, a previous install. So, in fact, what I can do is just uninstall, and this is how it should look. So, you want to go ahead and just click on install, and that means now we've got the Python extension installed. And what it's going to do for us is just give us some nice features when we're working and writing our Python code. It's going to do some syntax highlighting, and it's gonna do some kind of intelligent auto-completion. So it's not gonna make you a better programmer, but it will help. So go ahead and feel free to install that. 
So that pretty much covers it for Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. And the next tool we're gonna to get is a console emulator. And it looks a little bit like this. And if you've never used a console or a terminal, it's just a text-based way for us to interface with our computer. Just like here, we use a mouse, we do things, we right-click, we open files, we save files, we drag them around, copy and paste, etc. Well, we do this, we do all those same operations from within a terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll down here to download full. And the full version is gonna come with Git for Windows. And again, if you don't know what Git is, don't worry, it's just a, a version control system which we can use for our code and projects. And we will be covering Git later on in this series or maybe in another series. I'm not sure yet, I haven't decided. So let that download and once it's downloaded, go ahead and click on it. This can take just a little while to download the zip file. But once it's done, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna unzip it and install it. So this is taking a little bit longer, but it shouldn't take too long. Bear with me. There we go. So what the first thing you wanna do, this is a zipped file, so you wanna go ahead and extract, extract all, and I'm just gonna do it to the downloads directory. That's fine. So go ahead and it's gonna take a few minutes to extract. So let me talk a bit more about this, uh, this tool, this terminal emulator, this console. Again, like I said, it's not required, but it's gonna allow everyone to follow along and use the same commands. Now, if you are comfortable with working in the Windows command prompt. So for example, here we have a Windows command prompt and it's, like I said, it's just a way for us to interface with our computer, but instead of using a mouse, we use text and we write commands, but it's more than just navigating our machine. It's um, where we're going to actually interface with Python. We're actually going to run our Python code and run our Python files from the terminal here. So if you are going to be a, if you want to be a programmer or you want to learn some more about programming, you're really going to have to learn about the uh, command prompt or terminal. Now, I remember when I first started learning programming, I fired up the command prompt and I was a bit intimidated. I thought, you know, am I going to break something? This all looks a bit crazy. It's just text. Um, but trust me, you're not. It's absolutely fine. And you're not going to break anything unless you go ahead and search for some silly command or you copy in a command which someone tells you to on the internet. Um, don't do that. Obviously, that's a bad idea. But once you start using a text-based command prompt or terminal, you will use it all the time and once you get the hang of it, then you can actually get things done quicker, you're more efficient, um, and you can do more than just, like I said, you, it's more than just navigating your file system, you can create scripts, which then you can run, and automation, and all sorts of cool stuff. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this one, but the uh, terminal command prompt is gonna be an essential tool if you want to learn programming. So let's check our progress. Here we go, 98% complete. I'm gonna close this, which is just the default. And like I said, if you if you know what you're doing with the Windows command prompt, then you probably don't need Commander. But like I said, I want everyone to be able to follow along and use the same command. So once that's downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and click. And you're gonna get this warning. Don't worry, just because they're downloaded from the internet. Unblock and continue. And that's open full screen, so I'm gonna minimize that. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. So the first thing I want to do is just pin VS Code to the taskbar. And I'm going to do the same with Commander. I'm going to pin that here. I'm going to close that and reopen it. And the first thing I'm going to do is make this bigger so you guys can see. So in Commander, bottom right hand corner, come to Settings. I'm going to go to uh, Fonts. And I'm going to change this font size here just to 28 so you guys can hopefully see a bit more about what we're doing. So I'll go ahead and make this bigger. So this is the command prompt. 
this is our command line here, which we can use to navigate our file system and run commands. And you can see here, on the first line, we get a uh, little string here of the current location of where we are. So we are in our C drive, in users and in Julian. And this isn't gonna be a exhaustive, exhaustive uh, tutorial on commands here, but um, Commander does use the Linux commands. So for example, we can do ls, which is gonna list the contents of the directory that we are in. And you can see here, we've got desktop. So let's go ahead and we're gonna use the cd command followed by desk. And I'm gonna click tab, which is gonna auto complete. Go ahead and click enter. I'm gonna clear and do ls again. And here we are. So we're in our desktop and you can see behind us, this is where we are. And we've only got one file in here, which is an INI file, which is just a kind of Windows file, which gives some details. Don't worry about that file too much. So what can we do? Well, let's go ahead and create a directory. And we do that with mkdir, make directory or mkdir, and then we give it a name. So let's make a directory called test. You can see that we get a test directory appear on our desktop. And let's move into that directory with cd followed by test. And now we're in, we can do ls and we can see we haven't got any files. So we can use the touch command to create a file. So let's do test.py. And if you didn't know, a .py file is a Python file. So there we go, we've created our first Python file. And if we ls, we can see now we've got this one file. Now, if we go and right click on this, we can see we get this open with code, which is nice because we selected that as a checkbox when we were installing it. So if we go ahead and maximize that, we can see here we've got a, we've opened our test directory and we've got our test.py file. Don't worry about that. Go ahead and close any prompts or just get rid of them, get them out of the way. So here we are in our file explorer. So what we can do in Visual Studio Code, we can create a new folder. Let's just call this hello. And we can create a new file in that folder. So we can do hello.py. And we're just getting a prompt here saying linter pylint isn't installed. So a linter is just a tool which looks over your code and tells you if you've got any errors. Um, you can go ahead, feel free to install it. I don't want it, so I'm just gonna click close. I think you do get an option there to say, don't warn me again, so feel free if it's annoying, get that out of the way. So there we go, we've created a few files, and for example, uh, we can do just hello, and we can use the search here. So a cool thing about the search, we can do hello, and we can replace with goodbye. And if we go ahead and click on that, can see here we get a match and if we want we can go ahead and swap that round and so we can use this search to modify uh, our code if we want so we can search for things and replace them so it's quite cool a nice little feature of visual studio code uh, you can also do it by regular expression but if you don't know what a regular expression is then do not worry we're going to cover that later on in this series as well so that's everything i want to show you for visual studio code Go ahead, I'm just gonna save that. Go ahead and minimize it. And now you can see here, if we do an ls, we've got our new directory that we created there in VS Code. We can cd, uh, hello. And we can ls and we can see we've got our new hello.py file. So like I said, um, Commander does use the Linux commands. So if you, uh, if you don't know any Linux commands, then don't worry, we are gonna be covering everything as we go in this series. However, feel free to go ahead and do a YouTube search for uh, basic Linux commands or something. And I'm sure you will find plenty of videos where you can learn a little bit more. And I definitely recommend learning some more, um, learning some of the Linux commands or the bash commands is gonna be really helpful for you going forward. So we've got our terminal emulator, we've got our text editor, we've got all the tools we need to start learning some Python. So. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions or comments, then feel free to drop them in the comment section below. 
And like I said, this is a start of a new series and I've got plenty of videos coming soon. So feel free to subscribe for those as well. As I did explain, you don't have to use these tools. Um, if you are comfortable using the Windows command prompt or if you're a Linux user, then chances are you know what you're doing with the terminal. So you won't need this. You can just follow along using your own tools. And that's all I've got for this one. So guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.